apropos of some advice that Taylor Swift dropped on uh, graduating class of whatever the hell this year is um, at NYU, uh, I want to talk about everyone's cringiest moment. This is the cringies, but about us. Secondly, learn to live alongside cringe. No matter how hard you try to avoid being cringe, you will look back on your life and cringe retrospectively. Cringe is unavoidable over a lifetime. Even the term cringe might someday be deemed cringe. I promise you, you're probably doing or wearing something right now that you will look back on later and find revolting and hilarious. You can't avoid it, so don't try to. All right, there you have it. Taylor Swift um, just uh, telling it like it is when it comes to cringe. And uh, I, I am will stand by what I am wearing forever. <laughs> It's a simple gray shirt. I got it, I think, at uh, Crossroads or one of the, you know, places. And a gold <laughs> chain that maybe the gold chain, I'll be like, this is dumb. But I don't, I like my, I stand by my lip color tonight. Uh, mm -hmm. But no, this is Taylor Swift at NYU, which is my, is it alma mater? I don't know. I don't, I went to NYU, so I'm not that smart. Um I did go to NYU, so it's fun to see her there. Go Violets. Also, fuck NYU. <laughs> uh, and it's an overpriced bullshit uh, school. But um, you can't avoid the cringe. And it's kind of sweet to have like a pop star tell us that you can't avoid cringe. Speaking of Atsuko's initial statement on this show, anyone who goes out of their way to be forever cool is... Yeah immediately annoying also yeah and and it's just not good for you either it stunts your growth you have yeah. to be open to being like oh i failed publicly you know <laughs> also that gold necklace my grandma would happily <laughs> collect it? that but yeah, it, yeah, it, <laughs> one day you changed your mind about it like you said yeah like we all look really cool here we all look really awesome cool. but <laughs> i want to ask you both and everyone in the chat what is a time, a thing you did, a period of your life where you were cringe, where you did look back? Now you look back and you're like, oh, shit. Um, I can go first. Sure. I, uh, I used to be into jam bands, guys. Uh, when I was at NYU early, like I was like 17, 18 and fucking string cheese incident, fish fucking oh, okay. that's uh, jam bands oh okay so is yeah. that like it's, ska is it ska no or something? no oh, it okay. is high me, high white men with hacky sacks jamming for oh. an hour uh and in that hour no women or people of color play instruments in that entire time that's what a jam band is oh. um some of the music is good look i'm gonna like look Trey Anastasio, you fucking, you're, you good? Like, I'm not going to totally throw fish under the bunch, under, under mm -hmm. the bus. I've been elbowed by a lot of dudes trying to ska or dancing in jam band concerts. They dance like this, right? Like the feet are like this. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so okay, I've perfect. seen it. I've seen it. I, okay. I just, I just want to understand really this adorable. genre. <laughs> so, jam bands, it's like a, it's like a, a shroomy NorCal, even though they're not all from there vibe of like lots of instruments whatever someone explain jam bands i don't why know. do you think that's cringy that you were into that sure like you know there's aspects that could be improved like you said only the white guys could touch the instruments for whatever reason um because it first of all it got me out to see music which i don't think is cringe i think that's awesome like i would go out and like yeah. see music all around new york but it, it was just kind of the one of the lamer genres <laughs> Music. Okay, like, okay. Like it's just so you have to be so high 
to be like, oh, this this guitar solo or this thing. Like you just you have to like never leave the 16 year old high version of myself back at home. And and like my like high school boyfriend was into jam band. So that's why I also got into jam. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit of like, this is what I want to do. But like low key, this is what like the guys I dated also were into. You know what I mean? Sure. Sure. Um, Yeah. And my hair couldn't dread. And so like I could never really like be (laughs) one of those jam band girls. Got it. Sad. That may have saved you some some of the pictures to look back on, though. (laughs) Yeah, one hundred percent. It really did. I I would have had dreads. It sounds like the heart of it was like inauthenticity a little bit too, right? Like you're saying, like it was what my boyfriend was into, and so you just adopt a persona, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we've all been like, now I'm a this person. Oh yeah, that's what it was. Oh Um, yeah. Either one, Atsuko or Molly, cringe, a moment, a thing, something do you, you said. Do you want a rock, paper, scissors? <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, ready? Rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper. You Wait, okay? Wait you, <laughs> you changed you, it. You, it was tied at, at, at rock. Okay, I, was, okay. I was still going. <laughs> okay, okay, rock, okay, rock paper, paper, scissors. scissors. No, okay, rock, paper, scissors, go. Is it the third? Here's the shoot. <laughs> oh, I think, you know what? How about rock, paper, learned... scissors, go? All right. Okay. Yeah, okay, good. Ready? Okay, that's not rock, how we ready? play where I came from. Okay. Rock, rock paper, 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 scissors, scissors. shoot. Go. Shoot. Okay. All right. Molly okay. Molly got scissors. Asuka's got paper. Asuka, you go. Okay. All right. Um, well, I think it has to do with like when, when you're like super, you think you're super earnest about it. And I think it still goes back to the inauthentic to yourself thing, mm-hmm. you know, cause you, I, I went through a phase where I was like, maybe I'm like, you know, well, I wanted to s- contribute, you know, during like Trump years and especially when he first got elected, but sometimes yeah. you just realize you, maybe you're not a political comedian, you know, maybe you're not like, People don't come to you to hear about that. You can be into it. You can read it. You care. You can care. You can try to do all the things to try to change uh, the world. But you don't. It's not. Nobody comes to me to see what I have to say about Trump. Right. Uh, but I made a video you come on the vituation room. Sorry. Uh huh. You wait. Wait. There's a video. Yes. No, no, no. Yeah. I come on to the vituation room to provide, you know, just my personality and my conversations to to you, you know, I, in whatever ways I can support. Yeah. But uh, I'm not going to host a vituation room. You know, very important to this. Know that. About I, I yourself. wouldn't wish this pain on anyone else. Uh, <laughs> I'm just well, you kidding. look like you're having a ton of fun, you know, and so that's <laughs> great. You. I do enjoy it. But wait, so there's a video. What did you do? How did you know you were not you're not George Carlin of now? Well, it wasn't even like a talking clip. So I did an interpretive dance to Kate Bush's running up that hill. <laughs> no, is it running up that hill? Maybe it is to running up that hill. <laughs> Um, and yeah, and, uh, I have like an American flag and like, I like dance interpretively. Um, somebody just like, yeah, it said like USA on like the sidewalks. I danced next to it. (laughs) And then I like peed or like quote unquote peed on the flag. (laughs) It's just like so earnest. It's like so (laughs) embarrassing. And Yeah. That's really funny. That doesn't sound that earnest. You've joke peed while running up a hill to Kate Bush. That sounds kind of funny. It, it's it's like not though. You were like, I meant it as art. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, what are you like? People don't know what you're doing. Like people <laughs> watching were like, this, I think this is going to be a bad video. Like innocent bystanders who were there just trying to have a good day because I was in the streets running around shooting this. And yeah, so it's on unlisted on my YouTube. I don't delete it because I want it to be there to remind me <laughs> in case I ever stray away from my actual interests ever again. That is so funny. Thank you for telling us. No, of uh, course. Yeah. Um, Molly, cringy moments of your past that Tay Swift wants you to embrace. So the one that comes to mind like you're talking about it being earnest or not this was very earnest and genuine (laughs) it wasn't for anyone else but I did go through a very serious unicycling phase when I was younger 
That's cool. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Ernest is good. But Except I, I wasn't very good at it. <laughs> you don't have to. It's about Ernest, like being earnest and actually being into the thing and, yeah. and being authentic to you. Mine wasn't authentic <laughs> to me. <laughs> Okay, okay, right, right, right. Unfortunately. But now you're looking back. Were would you like also wear a sort of like a Victorian dress with like a little like bustier, not whatever the thing is on no. your butt? <laughs> and like no, have a little yes. monkey with a monocle. I'm sorry, I'm just there's mad. a weird, there's like circus unicycling, but then there's also this like subculture of unicycling that like do cool tricks. And I was like, I really wanted to be a part of that. Um, yeah. but I couldn't do any cool tricks. <laughs> I think, I think that's cool. I was like, I go, I'd sign off on that today. Like, <laughs> yeah, but I, I can ride a unicycle as a result of this. That's well, at least I could, you know, 10 years ago. I don't know if I still can. What is the trick of riding a unicycle? You mean like, what's the secret to it? I mean, besides shamelessness, obviously, but what's... <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's key. <laughs> and, and balance, it... and balance. Right, right. Is it like a hella core? I doubt it, <laughs> because that, that was not me. Um, I think the secret is you always just have to sort of, like, if you sort of are always about to fall forward, then you can just kind of keep up with yourself. But as soon as you start to go backwards, then then things go downhill. Like if you are leaning backwards, so you just sort of are always a little yeah, too far leaning, forward. <laughs> totally, totally. Which is why I can't do most sports. Like skiing, I hate because I'm always like, I don't want to go into the mountain. And then you're like, well, you're going to fall then. You have to like always lean yeah. into the danger. Um, yeah. Wow. I like this. Unicycle peeing in a Kate Bush interpretive dance against the Trump administration. I have to see this, Atsuko. I think this is all progress. Like, this is leaning forward. Isn't that what we're all trying to do? What's what we're doing? Cheryl Sandberg I... does love leaning in. <laughs> we're good feminists now. Um, and to top all of our moments, you know, because these have been really embarrassing, and um, thank you for being so forthcoming, but there is someone who has done something far worse than either of us or anyone in the chat has ever done. Uh, and he had a little bit of a moment of recognition of his past cringe by creating a new moment of cringe. And here is George W. Bush speaking about how terrible the war in Ukraine is and how awful Vladimir Putin is. Russian elections are rigged. Political opponents are imprisoned or otherwise eliminated from participating in the electoral process. The result is an absence of checks and balances in Russia and the decision of one man to launch a wholly unjustified and brutal invasion of Iraq. I mean, of Ukraine. <laughs> Iraq, too. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> 75. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so he says uh one man's decision to launch a brutal and unjustified war on iraq i mean ukraine and there's no coming back from that like there's no just even there had to have been a, an acknowledgement of what a fucking freudian slip that was and so he does like Nah, Iraq too and then you kind of see like deep into his little hollow soul that like Dick Cheney ate out with a watermelon scooper you know <laughs> like a mel like a melon ball scooper just like you see him in all of his fucking guilt right there like well Iraq too anyway I'm a painter now don't lock <laughs> me up <laughs> yeah yeah, the, the comeback, I was saying a little bit earlier, like just as a comedian, if I was judging it as a comedic performance, sure. uh, 75 saying the age, his age was pretty, pretty good. But yeah. starting a war, pretty bad. Right. So, and I'm yeah. We, <laughs> like, I couldn't tell if it was I'm 75 as in, you know, I can't remember these things and I get confused easily, uh, which is not an excuse because homie would get confused a lot during his time in office when he was a lot younger. For or sure. if it was like, I'm 75, i.e. 
don't lock me up now. I don't have <laughs> that much more time. I don't left. want to die in prison. Oh no, I think he <laughs> right. was saying it out loud so he remembered how old he was. <laughs> it was it was I'm 75. I am George. And then he probably had to say <laughs> the city he was in too. What's going on, Frantifa? If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel right now. Hit that button. And also, you can become a patron and support the show every single week. Get access to bonus episodes and exclusive merchandise. Patreon.com slash Bituation Room. Do it.